touching the power. This is a conviction and often we need to employ the ruling team as a platform of this. Being a press test conference addressed by myself, Comrade Zach Kulikova, I'm the national president of the Public Governance on behalf of the coalition of civil society organizations. On Monday, March 13th, 2020, as indicated to the Kenya Judgment of the press. By December 2020, the Economic and Financial Camp Commission, EFCC, will be 20 years old. Like most government agencies in Nigeria, especially in the atmosphere of political rancor and sharply divided opinions. The, the agency has had its ups and downs, one accolade and plea at the same time. However, and unarguably, it has, especially in the last few years, demonstrated its continual relevance and earned increasing confidence among the people and incorruptible government and private stakeholders. stakeholders. These successes cannot be separated from the commitment and sacrifice of individuals who have relentlessly kept with their assigned roles in the pursuit of EFCC mandate. If you do not have the privilege to know all of these individuals, the seminar players known to us and from whom we can vouch as members of the society deserve mention. Mr. Abdashid Baba, the current chairman of the commission, is among such individuals whom we strongly believe should be our point of contact with appreciation of truthfulness, commitment to building of enduring democratic institutions, and consistent struggle against corrupt practices in the public space and in politics. At its inception, the mandate of the ESCC was not only to, to clear, but lofty and the honors enough. It included prevention, enforcement, and coordination. But in the earlier years, there were serious issues with public confidence as a result of poor perception of the laws and the general finance that the implementation of the laws were targeted at the opposition. There was also the issue of low conviction rates even when cases were brought before the court, pointing at some levels of poor performance in enforcement and coordination. However, in the last seven years, records have shown increased competence and commitment, particularly following the appointment of Mr. Bawa in February 2021. There was spike, excuse me, in conviction and recovery across all zones of the country. For example, in 2016, and in 2019, the number of convictions secured rose from 195 to 1,280. And by 2021, the figure hit unprecedented 22,220, a value amounting to 98.47% of all cases brought before the court of law. In the same year, over 150 billion naira was recovered, with recovery in other currencies such as 386 million US dollar, 1.182 million pounds, and 156,000 euros. The record for the year 2022 is even more stunning for the forces of corruption and encouraging for that corruption forces as total number of commission in the year in the year was 3,785, a 70% increase over the 2020, 22,220 recorded in 2021. In the year, percentage conviction was 98.90%. It is noteworthy that this conviction highlights the competence of the enforcement team in ensuring arrest and prosecution based on concrete evidence other than capricious reasons and intentions. The monetary, the monetary recovery was also higher in the year 2022 with over 260 billion naira, US dollar 509 billion, 2.8196 million euros, 876.1 138 British pounds and millions of other foreign currencies recovered. These values exclude assets such as automobile, 
electronics, machines, factories or tests, petroleum products, and mineral, minerals such as lithium, which were recovered in the same period and war billions of naira. Thus, the ESS has not only become the nightmare of corrupt politicians and public officers, but that of morning laundress, Yahoo boys, and local foster, ensuring no resting place for them and reposing confidence of the mass of our people in the possibility of building a greater nation, without doubt. It remains one government agency that has moved from the position of being regarded with much pessimism and malignant to that of being referred to as an enviable entity. Corrupt politicians and public, office, public officers across party divide, frosters across geopolitical zones, and girls of men across religions. And faith now know that the fear of EFCC is the beginning of wisdom. For the first time, Nigeria has witnessed a five year period of consistent, unrelenting, unbiased, and upscaling battle against corruption that has the support of well meaning citizens because of transparency and indisputable results. All because an agency has emerged from a controversial past. Where people often ask, what will be the outcome? Or do you trust them to one that in the common mass balance has mastered both starting and finishing? The long and short of it is that the cases of ERCC in the last two years have been managed by teams who know they are the onions and who have brought experience to bear on what they do under the, under the watch of a youthful and astute boss in person of Rashid Baba. And there are many other reasons why it will be counterproductive to want to tinker with such with such people. Usually when government change as it is often thought, it is often thought necessary to also make changes in various agencies as to reflect the policies and trust of the new government, especially when a new party takes the reign of power. This is, this is because different ideologies, different manifestos, and different principles. Why not fundamentally contradicting, con contradicting the constitutional role of government agencies can impinge on the effectiveness of implementation? Thus, a new party will not most likely inject, will most likely inject into the agency his own trusted as. But in this case, the president-elect is from the same party as the president and in over the reign of power come May 29, 2023. Hence, there is no conflict at the partisan level. And the incoming president should be interested in furtherance of the good work of the outgoing president, especially in areas where evidence are banned of such good work. Follow from above and at the risk of sounding like a card record player, you may go to state once more that the ESCs of today has performed superlatively well. Beyond imagination, especially in the area of prosecution of cases and litigation, you don't change a winning team. You can put together an, an equally strong group of players in the bench in case of one or two of the players get tired. But the winning team must be allowed to exploit its talent, explore new field, and continue to bring it in the lorry and trophies. Today's team of EFCC under Bawa represents such winning team. The greatest thank you such a team could get is to retain them. For us in the civil society and beyond the details of the great work the EFCC team has been doing, and the fact that incorruptible and fearless individuals like Abrashid Bawa continuously deserve a place in the fight against corruption in Nigeria. His integrity, intellectual proudness, dedication, proficiency of his legal team is unraveling. Turning cases and ability to not only ensure conviction via logical argument, but also the ma be mindful of ensuring justice even to the culpable accused person, standing out as a public savage juggernaut, not to be toyed with. 
in the fight against corruption. They represent to us an exemplar in the fight against corruption in the present and in the future. The anti-corruption effort needs more like him. Mr. Abdul Rashid Baba is like his likes in this effort still have more to contribute and to teach to upcoming generation of anti-corruption enthusiasts. Practitioner and expert in the unique field of democratic institution building. Abdul Rashid Baba we know, Abdul Rashid Baba we trust, Abdul Rashid Baba remain the best man for the job. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press, thank you all. You have listened to the uh, address from the chief convener of this uh, gathering, Commissioner Zach Lukova. I want to open the floor now for questions, observations, and comments. Thank you. Please, before, when you signify, can you identify yourself before you ask your question? All your generation of comments. Thank you. Please, I'm here to man. It's like we are. There's no here. Are we on a sick with what I've been Are you becoming a mouthpiece for them, or is it a paid campaign? Okay. So thank you. Let's start with the uh, court uh, uh, content first. Our role as a civil society is not just to condemn government when they do something wrong. Contrary to the opinion of people that government should be condemned randomly by the society. It is irresponsible radicalism to look at government and see nothing good about them. Our role is to be a mediator. If government has done well, we say they have done well. If they have not done well, we say they have not done well. I have two, we have two sides to the judgment and to the court uh, content. One, the commission has responded to that. And, I, and that is part of what we are trying to 
our parts that we want to build a barricade around our institutions so that public opinion will not be built against our institutions all the time. We build the public opinion against INEC, we build the public opinion against the EFCC, you keep building public opinions against them. They won't do their duty. You are creating a crisis of perspective for them. Our role as citizens is to support our institutions to perform their duty. The moment you allow them to keep mulling them down, we are going to have a nation again. So for us, we have taken a decision to make sure that uh, we will no longer fold our arm as it persecute our institutions. And we wonder why the response of ESC is not as popular as when they said yes, uh, uh, it's, it's a content cause. You see, they have responded perfectly. That's one. Number two is that uh, we have to also talk to our judiciary. The moment someone is accused of stealing, he gets sick at the court, he will be seeking for excuse to go abroad. Then they go to court and start applying for very funny injunctions. That's not how to catch thief. That is not universal standard. The standard in the world is that this commission of this nature, people stand by it. You can't get certain judgments that why must Abrashid be the one to appear at maybe there are 10, 15 years of cases in, across the country in a day. Why will he will be in Portaco? Why must he be in Anambra? Why must he be in Odisha? That is an attempt by corrupt people to fight the commission back. And that is uh, 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 corruption fighting back. So for us, we have to examine the intention of people who have gone taking that, take that in question. We have to examine the intention of people who are talking about this content. May our good friend from TVC said that there's still corruption. And it's this attitude that is emboldening corrupt people. If you keep listening to, ah, yes, you see, has done this, what has day in, day out, the institutional corruption, to an extent that the young people today felt that it is a career. So to have our country back, let us rally around the SEC. Then, on why it is power? We have to learn to celebrate our first elements. When Magu was going, he was almost turned out, out of office. When uh, uh, the other police officer, Farida, why must we continue to turn these guys out of office? The reason why they picked them, they have seen their profile. They were nice guys. But the, the, the moment he became a FCC boss, he became a bad person. People start. So we will not allow people who are fighting against commissions like this, ICPC, FCC, to mull him down again. We are standing by him. And we have more no more issue about that. We have for 33 years of have been time against government. And it's time for us to start educating people coming behind us that it's not about condemning government, though. it's also about seeing the good side of the government. So we have to begin to rework, and the young people need mentorship in this direction. That is not about condemn the culture of violence is growing up in the country. We want to do something about it, and that is part of what we are doing today. That you must not move out every day with the mindset that my country is bad. Nothing good about anybody. So, after Bauer today, we have done extensive training on INEC, extensive training on police engagement, extensive training on how to respond to when people come to arrest you. You can't, if when someone comes to arrest you, you cannot be resisting arrest. If you resist arrest, they will come after you. If they knock on your door, you don't open the door. They will, it's a standard all over the world. So, Bawa, we are standing by Bawa. Bawa will not be allowed to mold down. Bawa is doing a fantastic job, and we are going to continue to stand by him. My colleague may have one of the things to see. Then, on corruption, the role of Bawa, the role of ESCC, is to fight corruption. Other attending issues like build your economy is not a uh, Bawa's case. And that's a universal question that all of us must put ahead to answer. Uh, my. You see, uh, we have to take note of something. Second page of the near that is behind. The second paragraph, line four. We mentioned about the hotels, petroleum products, and mineral sources. This is the first time Nigeria is reading this in a news. 
conference like this. EFCC have never mentioned to us that the problem in Northeast is this product. And EFC is coming out now to give us information about this product, that they are arresting people, that they found this particular materials in their hands. This is the greater corruption we are facing in this country today. Forget about money. This thing is the most expensive property in the whole world today. So when somebody is coming out that he is arresting people and recovering this property on behalf of Nigeria, we need to give them kudos. All over the world, America is causing war in different countries because of this material. And that's part of what we are suffering in this country. Let me be honest with ourselves. This material is found in the northeast of this country. And people have they started arresting people who are trading in this material. Which illegally. I see. Illegally. And this is even more expensive than gold and diamond. So this is the major thing that interested us in coming out to tell you that this thing is going on here. We are giving information to Nigeria because we have the privilege to get this information from them. And we cannot keep it to ourselves because we are not going to allow it that these people continue to kill Nigerians because they want to do this business illegally. Until EFCC get the last arrest, this business must stop, government must step in. This is the reason why we are here today. Uh, <clears throat> Okay. Gentlemen of the press, because there are no ladies in the press. No. <laughs> um, I just want us to recognize that uh, what we are doing here is not only for today, but also for tomorrow. We live in a society today whereby the mindsets of our young ones, I think we need to be very careful. It's all about condemnation, kill, destroy, burn. We need to make them realize that there's the good side of life. And if we are not careful, these young ones will not have a tomorrow, which we have been privileged to have. Somebody talked about corruption. EFCC, we must all recognize, is the creation of the law. And the law stipulates its functions. EFCC cannot come into my house and tell me how to inculcate good character in my children. To combat or to fight corruption starts from our homes. What type of children are we breeding? The former EFCC chairman told us some time ago that in Nigeria today, we have an association of uh, mothers of Yahoo Yahoo boys. You know, it's reprehensible that in this same society where in the past, if you come into sudden wealth, you yourself, you know, you cannot enter your society. People will ask you, ah, where are you coming from? Where did you get this money? We've had cases of people who were older than us who got employment, and before they knew it, the company where they were working gave them official car. And when they took it home, their father drove them away from the house. That you have just started, well, where did you get money to buy this car? You can't take it to you. This car must not sleep in my company. And it took the understanding, the patience of the young man to explain to his father. But these days we have our children who are in the universities who are buying brand cars. And people are said, I even had one or several where parents will buy drinks to celebrate their children by a child that is still in the institution of our learning. So the fight against corruption is a fight that involves all of us. While we are uh, celebrating Baba today, it's because of the good things he has done. Some of us have never met Baha. But we must recognize that the only way to build this society is to build institutions. And Baha represents the face of EFCC today. We don't know who will be there tomorrow. So if Baha has done right, as civil society practitioner, it's our duty to come out and say, look, Nigerians, like the Yoba say, like the Yoba say, you can, you know, there's no way there's nobody who is perfect. That's what we are saying in short. So we are celebrating EFCC today, and we are calling on Nigerians to look at the good side of what where EFCC is doing well. And wherever they are doing right, uh, wrong, we also owe ourselves that responsibility to point it out. And that is the area of the court injunctions. You know, when courts grant judgments, a lot of times, you know, the other party goes to court for stay of execution. 
but we are in a society today where because of the fight fact that it, corruption fight back, you know, some people misreport court judgments just to suit their own whims and caprices and you know a cause confusion in the society. So why we are here today is not only to you know just to brief you, it's also to send a message out there that if we have found anybody in public office, because these public institutions are working for Nigerians that are not for themselves. Whether we find them doing well, we'll be bold enough to bring our chest out and say, look, we are behind you as Nigerians. Thank you. Please. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe on our YouTube channel, subscription is free. You can call us on 08059780074 for your events coverage. Thanks.